Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at starting with fields in the new geometry nodes in Blender 3.0. If you'd gotten used to using named attributes in the previous versions of geometry nodes, this might seem like a bit of a departure. But once you get used to using fields, you're really going to like them. So let's get into it. A field is a way to work with the attributes of our objects. Here I've plugged a mesh grid node into a set position node into my geometry output. On the set position node, you'll see that there are three diamond shaped inputs. The diamond shaped inputs indicate that those sockets can accept a field. And that field will be evaluated for the geometry that's coming into that node. If I take this index node, which you can add through the input index option, and I plug it into one of these inputs of the set position node, the index that will be made available to the set position node will be the index of the points from the grid that's coming into the set position node. If I had another node later on, like this, and I was to put a field into this one, I would be working with the geometry coming into this node, rather than the geometry coming into this node. Let's take a look at a quick thing we can do using just the index and the set position. I'm going to connect my index to the set position selection. Then I'll change the Z offset to 0.1. Since selection takes a Boolean value, we can tell that because of the pink color, and I'm sending it an integer value from my index, you can tell by the dark green value. Anytime the index is zero, this will be false, and anytime it's not zero, this is going to be true. We can see the index of each vertex here in the spreadsheet view. So it starts with index 0 and goes up to index 624. So this point that's down here is the 0th point, so it's not being affected by the set position, and the rest are. I'm going to go ahead and add a utility math node. Then I'll change the operation to compare. The next thing I'm going to do is add an input integer and plug that into the value. This way, I'll be inputting exactly integers instead of working with a float value. Whenever my index is within 0.5 of whatever integer that I put in, that one will be affected. So as I cycle up these integers, the point being affected by my set position will move along with it. Of course, I could also increase the epsilon to select more values. So to wrap up this video, Let's take a look at how we could apply a texture now to our grid. I'm going to remove these nodes. I'll add a vector combine XYZ node. And I'll plug this into my offset. Next, I'll choose a texture from the texture menu. I'm going to go with a Musgrave texture. Now I'll plug the height into the Z component of my combine XYZ. So because these fields are coming from each point of this grid, each one of those points is getting a new Z coordinate from the Musgrave texture. Of course, this effect is a little too intense, so I'm going to add a math node to scale it down. I'll set my operation to divide and ramp up the value. Now, of course, I could get a higher resolution by changing my grid size. Or I could add a subdivide node. And this will procedurally increase my resolution. Of course, this just scratches the surface with what you'll be able to do with fields, and we'll be digging into some more complex situations soon. Also, because fields are a fundamentally different way of working with data than named attributes were, I'll be revisiting some of my older videos to see how we could accomplish some of those effects now using the new field system. As always, I hope you're finding my content helpful, and I hope it's helping you make something awesome. So until next time, I'll catch you later.